The Lord is all I want. The Lord is all I need. You're my provider. The Lord is all I see. Living inside of me. He's my provider. The Lord is all I want. The Lord is all I need. He's my provider. The Lord is all I see. Living inside of me. He's my provider. The Lord is all I want. The Lord is all I need. He's my provider. The Lord is all I see. Living inside of me. You're my provider. The Lord is all I want. The Lord is all I need. You're my provider. The Lord is all I see. Living inside of me. He's my provider. The Lord is all I want. The Lord is all I need. He's my provider. The Lord is all I see. Living inside of me. He's my provider. Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. The riches of your love. Your grace is enough for me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love. Oh, your love, your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Great and mighty is our God, great and mighty is our God. 
and all God's people say it. Yeah. How mighty, how mighty is our God. And all God's people said, how mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. You know, um, this is going to be a very powerful uh, teaching here. You know what the Holy Spirit does? He, um, as you're joining in, you can share this broadcast. What the Holy Spirit does is he gives, he gives seed to his enemies. Our enemy of God is somebody that goes the wrong way, misses the mark, sins against him, disrespects him with decisions. He gives seed to his enemies so that you could plug in with his soul, receive his soul, because that's you need his soul to be delivered. So he gives seed so that you can invest in his presence, his word, and that's what you'll receive in return. The presence of God and the word of God taking you over. That's what you need. So he gives you seed to invest. Wherever you invest, you receive a harvest from wherever you're investing, whoever you're investing into. Well, when you invest in the Lord, you receive a harvest of the Lord's personality. You receive a harvest of his spirit. You receive a harvest of his ways. You receive a harvest of his mindset. And that's what you need to come out of being his enemy. So Ananias and Sapphira, they did not recognize that the Holy Spirit was giving them seed through their real estate. They needed to sow into King Jesus because their minds were wicked. They were his enemies mentally. They had the word, but the word did not have them. The word was not able to take over their body, their mind. So he gave them the seed so that they could receive the harvest of God's personality. Let me show you something. Adam was not sowing to stop sinning. Adam wasn't sowing to break a yoke. God gave Adam the seed when he was perfect, when he had no sin, when he had no iniquity, when he had no faults, and when he had no wrong doings on his account. So you understand that the seed, its origin and its original state was not to break yokes, though the seed breaks yokes. The seed was for Adam to continually receive the personality of God into himself. The seed was for Adam to constantly receive God's ways, taking over and saturating how he did things. The seed was to keep Adam in remembrance that the source and the resource was the Lord God. So the seed was to affect his soul. If you take a note, write that down. The seed was to affect. Adam's soul to continue in righteousness. So God was giving him the seed so that when he sowed it, his mind would, would stay planted in God. So you understand that the seed is a plantation into the purity of God. That's why if, if any, any, any person say that they are walking with God and they're not sowing, they're lying because how could you walk with or in Christ that you don't sow into because there's no harvest of his nature manifesting in you if you're not investing in that nature? Are you seeing this? 
You have to invest in that nature for that nature to be able to take over you or else you'll remain in the sinful nature. And in the word of God, people that struggled with sowing was not on fire for God. There's nowhere in the word with somebody that was on fire about sowing was was. Someone that wasn't on fire for sowing was on fire for the Lord. You never see it in the word. So understand that Solomon's sowing caused him to access the fire of God. His sowing caused him to access the fire of God. Whenever a person is sowing, you get baptized with fire from within. So inside of you, you are now receiving things in your mind to understand what dishonors God. Relationships, decisions, locations, activities. When you're sowing, you are releasing the wisdom of God into yourself to know what you must put an end to. That's why when you're in sowing, if you're fornicating with somebody, the Holy Spirit will tell you, I don't want you to have sex with them. Stop having sex with them. Stop bringing them over to your place. Stop answering their text messages. Stop get, receiving their compliments. Stop talking about, hey, how you doing? Stop answering them, ask you how you doing. Them how you doing spirits be dangerous. I'm just checking on you spirits. Well, don't check on me. <laughs> don't check on me. You ain't write no check. Don't check on me. <laughs> the only check that I, I, I want to hear from you is if you write out a check. If you're not writing out no check. Saints, once I once I disconnect from somebody, I disconnect from somebody. I I don't I don't need the Holy Spirit to wrestle with me forever to disconnect from somebody that's not supposed to be in my life. Are you understanding that? The seed gives you power to disconnect. From demonic strongholds in your associations. There are people that you'll never be able to see who they are until you start sowing into God. Because remember what I told you, when you're sowing into the Lord, you're receiving his personality and his perspective. You're receiving his opinion and his eyes. You can't see people until you start honoring God. Your eyes open up and say, oh, what, what is this person doing? What is they talking about? What is they standing for? They have a spirit. And then let me just tell you something. Let me tell you about life. And you got to understand this as a sower. People will tell you that the Holy Ghost told them something and they'll be lying and the Holy Ghost won't kill them on the spot. So sowing gives you a strong anointing to understand deception, to discern deception and the deceiver that is carrying the deception. Do you know that people will come to you and say, the Holy Ghost said to me, and they're lying on the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost doesn't kill them. Let me just tell you something. Well, why doesn't the Holy Ghost kill them? Number one, because now the spotlight is on you. You have to know the Holy Ghost to know that they lying to you. you. And if you haven't properly dealt with the Holy Ghost, if you've been ignoring the Holy Ghost, you'll be tricked by them. If you notice throughout the course of my ministry, I'm always pushing you to go to the Holy Ghost. Go find out. You go spend enough time with the Holy Spirit and respect him enough so that you can recognize that your mama is a witch. 
You can't recognize that your mama is a witch until the Holy Ghost show you. Mamas be witches. Nine out of 10 people grow up underneath a mother that is a witch. And witchcraft in your mother is not obvious because nine out of 10 mothers are religious very strongly. And even if they don't know Bible scriptures, they, they also, they have their own rudiments and laws in which they present to you that they are a trustworthy person. And see, when you recognize that your mother is a witch, you don't have to disrespect your mother verbally with words. But you have to know that you cannot live and abide by the words that they speak to you. See, I'm speaking as an apostle right now. When your mother is a witch, the Holy Spirit, he will target that witchcraft from transferring to you through your seeds. So let me just tell you something what the seed does. It is you cutting the cord of connectivity to your witchcraft mother. Nine out of 10 people grow up underneath a witchcraft mother. And let me just tell you what witchcraft mothers do. They read the latest spiritual books. They have a lot of knowledge. And let me tell you what spiritual witches do. Witchcraft mothers. They join churches and they serve in churches and they're always in drama in churches. When they join the church, they're always in conflict. They always got problems with somebody. Oh, they looked at me bad. Oh, da, 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 da. oh, I don't like this person. Oh, they think that they, they always got something going on. They are gossipers. They are strife filled. I want you to understand this. Whenever you have a witchcraft mother, they have never finished anything that the Holy Spirit wanted them to finish in this life. Not one thing. They'll start good. They'll never end anything. So, yes, God uses your witchcraft mother at one point in life. But if you want to uh, understand the defining line, how do, how do I know if I have a witchcraft mother? They don't finish. You can say that they started. They never finish. What have they accomplished for the Lord? Nut team. Nut. Because you got to be a nut case. Sowing breaks the transference of witchcraft spirits from your mother to you. Mothers raise children. That has never been God's idea, his, his, or his perfect idea for a man to solely raise a child because God uses the man with outside work to bring provisions and to bring access uh, so that the household could be secure and safe. Uh, the man is used on the outskirts uh, to deal with serpents. Because oftentimes, uh, that, that's the safest way. You know the story of Adam. The female was deceived by the serpent. God often uses a man on the outskirts dealing with different souls and different people. Let me say this to you. Mothers raise children. The personality of a child comes from the mother. The, the core beliefs of a child come from their mother. If the mother is a whole, the child will be a whole. That's a hundred percent. If the mother go out on dates, the child going to start dating. That's a hundred percent. If the mother struggle with drugs, the child going to have 
their own addictions and strongholds in their life because those legions of spirits will follow that child in different manifestations. They may not, they may not struggle with drugs, but they're going to struggle with something else. But they're going to have those inward spirits that are habitual, addictive, uh, constant. Their soul going to go through the warfares of yokes. See, I want some of you all sons to understand also when your biological father, if he has a problem with sex, if he can't restrain sex, his sex demons is on you. Sowing breaks the sex demons of your biological father that comes to you. Let me let me help you understand about sex demons. Sex demons causes a man to have sex with woman that he not supposed to have sex with. Sex demons causes a man to be attracted to woman. That he not supposed to be attracted to. Sex demons make you spend all day watching pornography. Like you spent about three hours watching pornography. When you have sex demons, you'll even get exhausted with masturbation. <laughs> I'm apostolically talking. Maybe I should, should I have called this popping bottles. See, the Holy Ghost done took me over. You got to be careful how you, you got to be careful how you ask the Holy Spirit to take you over because the Holy Spirit will take you over. You'll just, you ain't got no filter no more. Bless God, I'm about to say something. I'm about to say some wild stuff on here. Huh? Sex demons, you'll be exhausted using sex toys. If you have children, turn, 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 turn me down. Don't let your children hear me talking like this. This broadcast is rated R, so, so click them off. Don't let them hear me talking like this because they don't need to hear this. I'm talking to the adults on here. You understand? Sex demons will have you buying sex toys. Your Google search, you looking for sex toys. Sex demons. That's why sex demons will have you get an STD. See, some of you all don't under, understand the root of how you had STDs. You got STD. You got an STD because of sex demons. They guided you to be horny. With someone that had horns. Don't let that go over your head. See? The seed breaks sex demons off of your soul. Because God don't have sex demons. And you need to receive deliverance from sex demons that are passed on to you from your parents. Who taught your parents how to overcome their sexual urges? Did anybody? Well, that same dispensation is sitting on you. That's why we have so much sex in the church. In the church building, You'll be shocked how many people are having sex with the musicians. Having sex with the pastor. Having sex with the congregation, the deacons, the elders. It's a sexual circulation because these people have knowledge what the word of God says, but they don't have the spirit of God to live by it. That's why you have to receive the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost will give you power to act out the knowledge correctly and properly. And then oftentimes in the, in the, the church building, uh, the sexual appetite is out of, is in chaos because these people have a form of godliness. They deny the power and demons capitalize on that because they actually want to make a fool out of you because they know that you have it properly connected to God. Yeah, you have it properly connected to God. They know that when we look for your altars, we don't see it in the spirit world. 
We don't see you honoring God and sowing into God and really tapping into his personality and his nature being translated to you. So we know that we can use you as a dummy, as a representation of God falsely. You wonder how could people have knowledge of the word and talk about we are not perfect? You know how stupid you got to be to say that? So you telling me that you believe in Jesus and the perfect blood of Jesus doesn't have the power. It has power, but it don't have enough power to make us perfect. If I'm receiving the blood of a perfect person, I just receive complete perfection, not some. When the Bible says in Colossians chapter two, that you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. You are complete in him. It didn't say that you are flawed. See, the seed allows you to receive the authentic word of God without your own flawed human interpretation. The seed allows you to see perfection. The seed breaks sex demons. The seed destroys the um, satanic covenant of pornography. Pornography is an altar. It's built by principalities and powers. Pornography is a power. Um, some of you all don't understand that there's a pornography anointing on you. There's an anointing for porn on you. The sowing anointing breaks the anointing of porn. The seed breaks the anointing of masturbation. Honoring God, remember, honoring God leads to God honoring you. See, I know some of you all struggle with your sexuality. I know that you, I know that you have horny moments. I can see you in the spirit. Well, I ain't going to call you out. I'm not calling your name out, but I'm letting you know, I know this as a prophet. I know this. And I'm not going to embarrass you, but I'm giving you the word to set you free. I'm giving you the word to deliver you. I know that you be touching on yourself. I know it. And see, Everybody likes to hide their sexuality. Because there's some of you all that have same sex thoughts. Because you don't understand this is coming from sex demons. You ponder what would it be like man on man, woman on Because you don't understand you have sex demons. Sex demons they don't have no boundary on how sex should go. That's why even in the Old Testament, it was saying don't have sex with animals. Why do people even think that? I'm showing you how sex demons operate. The seed destroys sex demons. Where you violate God and yourself sexually. Hold on, I want to do something real quick. The seed destroys sex demons in your life. See, sex demons don't have a restriction. And then when you have sex demons, they'll guide you to the right atmosphere to sleep with somebody. You got the person over at your place. Why the hell are they over at your place for? Why are you at their place sitting down on the couch like you, 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 you Tom and Jerry? Get them, get them crusty cakes up off the couch and go on about your business, baby. You pitting yourself in a predicament for the sex demons to accomplish their schedule. Some of y'all don't know that you got sex demons. When you got sex demons, you'll end up flirting with somebody in your apartment complex. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine. When I'm walking, the other day I was walking somewhere 
I saw this lady. She was up there. She was trying to get my attention. I put my face down. I don't want to see you have her. Pit you and the big old titties that you got. Pit them down. I don't want to see them. I'm not looking at them big old infested titties. They don't bother me. I'm not going to play with you. I could see as a prophet and see some of you all got to get to the point where you get irritated when somebody that's not supposed to enjoy you sexually keep on pushing themselves on you. You should get offended. I don't want your crusty chicken nuggets on me. You got to get offended. When Mr. Bojangles trying to entice you, be offended. Why are you trying to test my gangster? I don't want to corrupt myself with you. You got to get angry. See, stop getting so, uh, you get all aroused and excited because you think somebody paying you attention. You should get offended. I kid you not. I'm a, as I stand before the Lord God Almighty, let me tell you of a story. One time I was in a place, I ain't going to tell you where I was. It was a white young girl. I'm I promise you, the white young girl, she dazzled her makeup. She had a red lipstick. You know, you woman, you look, you look, you look real nice when you put on the red lipstick. <laughs> you look a true story. She had on red lipstick. You look like somebody when you put on a red lipstick. Red lipstick make, 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 make. And she had on her makeup real good. Had on high heels, everything. Had a nice outfit. Now watch this here. She tried to get my attention. I'm somewhere now. She tried to get my attention. And I ain't exaggerating to you. When I was, I looked over, I looked over again, and then my, my spirit eyes opened up. And I saw that the girl was a snake, a serpent, a scorpion. She had all these spirits. She had water spirits inside of her. Now, meanwhile, facially, she looks good. Bodily, she looks good. But I'm looking at the demon inside her. And guess what? Her spirits are not going to react the way that a spirit in India going to say, thou son of God. You remember when I was in India? I, was, I, I posted that video on Facebook. When I was in India, the, I walked past the Indian man. The man said, thou son of God, have you come? No, no. What is that? Thou son of David, have you come to torment us before time? When I was walking past, I wasn't even preaching. <laughs> And I waved my hand over that person and they, they, I, I ain't saying that before I said they was underneath and they was vibrating underneath the power of God and suspended too. Okay, nothing was holding them. <laughs> like no, no chair was holding. They was vibrating underneath the power of God. Now, look at this. I want to show you something. This girl, she proceeded to pursue me. She was signaling me to come to her like this. <laughs> now, meanwhile, while I'm looking at the white girl, in my mind, I'm thinking about how many people they can't see the spirit world when somebody is pursuing you that's not supposed to enjoy you sexually. If it's a weaker man, they're going to be enticed by that. If they have sex demons, they're going to be enticed by that. Or oh, I just use a condom. Condoms don't stop the demons that's inside of a person from entering inside of you. They do not stop the transference of curses that will follow you. You know how many men get into accidents simply because of who they're sleeping with? Because the demons inside of that woman are demons that are scheduling you to get hit by a tractor trailer. 
When you have sex with somebody, you are you are becoming one with their altar. If they're jackass, you're going to be a jackass too. That's why oftentimes when you see people start having sex, you can't even recognize them no more. There are parents, they don't understand why when they look at their daughter, it's like they looking at a wall. They looking at an alien because your daughter done had sex. She is no longer your daughter. She is who she had sex with. You're not talking to me in here. You wonder why when you have a son, your son start becoming sanctified and quiet and reserved in his room. Because the minute that he opens up himself to sex, that's no longer your son. That's why people, when they start having sex, you see they start joining gangs. They start doing crime. They start becoming disrespectful to cops and getting arrested, all type of stuff. Because sex opens up your eyes. Man was never supposed to have any sexual encounters until the Holy Spirit releases them to receive a harvest of sex. And the fact that man dabbles with sex without God's permission, they have demons inside of them. There's some of you all watching me right now. Even though you be calling me master, you be calling me king, you still got demons. You got demons of divination inside of you. When you have demons of divination, the girl was telling Apostle Paul, oh, this is the servant of God that have come to bring us the way of salvation. Some of you all don't recognize, even though you inside this ministry, you be calling me king. You be changing your last name to Holmes. You be doing all that stuff. The Holy Ghost is the one that had people start changing their name to Holmes because the Holy Ghost told me this is a moving of my spirit. I'm having people come on your altar because your altar has been broken off. I broke altars off of the name Holmes through the power of the Holy Ghost. I had asthma when I came into this world. I couldn't breathe. I had chronic asthma. I had bodily di diseases and I broke all of those altars. I got healed from all of those bodily di diseases that I had. Lung problems, skin problems, all type of problems. I broke the altars. So the Holy Ghost told me when I started seeing people change their name to homes without me telling them, he said, I'm pitting that in their mind. I'm talking to them because I'm showing them how to break the altar of sins and addictions and strongholds that has been invested in their bloodline by principalities and powers. When the Holy Ghost want to do something, it's always going to be persecuted by niggas. Niggas always going to have something to say about it. You know what a nigga is? A nigga is a no good person that they stick up for cultures and mindsets and worldly concepts that didn't come from God. They are critics. They are jealous. They are always stirring up strife between brethren. That's what God said in Proverbs chapter 6. He hates a man that soweth seed amongst brethren. There's people in my ministry, when they changed their name to homes, they started making money. When I met them, they was poor. When I met them, they ain't had nowhere to live. When I met them, they ain't had no food to eat. They ain't had no money. I had to pay for their flights to get to my conference. Now they playing, they paying for their own flights. They're making their own money. They're paying for their own hotel rooms. They are paying for their own meals. I don't have to, I don't have to show no generosity in that area to them because they are well sufficient. Because they changed their name to homes and they took on my altar. My altar is a money-making altar. I makes money when I was when I was 17, when I was 60, I was making money all the time. 14, I was making money. The name Holmes is a name of working hard. I work real hard. People, as soon as they changed their name to Holmes, they got healed from diseases and sicknesses because the disease was connected to the altar of their natural bloodline. And then let me just tell you something, how man's stupid. I'm going to tell you how man stupid because in the book of Revelation, Jesus himself said, I'm going to put my name on you. So what you going to do in heaven when Jesus start putting his name on people? You going to stand up town and say, hey, this is a cult. We going to take your, uh, this is a cult behind send you to the lake of fire. Them angels wrap you up, send you, send you down there with your grandfather, Lucy. Lucy. 
Lucy got a beard and a tuntun at the same time. Let me show you something in the text right here. Let me show you something. Jesus said that he's going to put his name on you. Watch this. Revelation chapter 3 verse 12 said this. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall go no more out. That means when you get to heaven, you ain't going to have to worry about working and, and laboring. You're going to have rest. Look what it says. And I will write upon him the name of my God. You're going to have tattoos in heaven. And don't go get no tattoo on your physical body right now. You'll, you'll have to hear the Holy Ghost. And you'll have to get clarity from the Holy Ghost on if he want that on your body. Don't do that because don't, don't mess with stuff just because you see people doing it. You need to find out the Holy Spirit will of God for your life. Don't do that. He said he's going to give you a tattoo in heaven. People in heaven have tattoos on them. He said, I will write upon him. The name of my God and the name of the city of my God. So you're going to have the name of the city on you. Just think about that. God is a tattoo artist in heaven. I'm not talking about on earth. We got scriptures on earth that said don't mark your skin because people was doing that when they were in rebellion towards God. They was pitting tattoos on their self to show how committed they was to being rebellious and following their deities and all their ideology of false gods. So that's why Satan aroused man to start getting tattoos. And what's up with you females always getting the tattoo by your left shoulder or your right shoulder? What's up? I always see females with the tattoo right here. <laughs> Just a jokey joke. All right, let me finish reading this text. And I will write upon him the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from God. And I will write upon him my new name. The Holy Ghost was the one that told me I'm telling people to change their name to homes. I'm the one doing that. That's why it comes underneath persecution. And, and watch this here. I, I want to show you this. Other ministries have people changing their name to their last name, which I believe is beautiful. But you notice that I have undergone the most persecution for it. You notice that, right? As soon as Prophet Joshua Holmes did it, because uh, let me just tell you something. I'm going to tell you what the Holy Ghost told me. I have a messianic mantle on me. The continuation of Christ's ministry. John the Baptist didn't undergo as much persecution as Jesus. But John the Baptist got persecuted. Believe that. But he didn't undergo what Jesus underwent. John the Baptist says, there's coming one mightier than I. Let me help you understand, in the realms of the spirit, when someone has a mightier assignment on them, the gates of hell will target them heavier than others. Let me just help you understand that. And I say all that to say that, Anybody in the body of Christ with an anointing and assignment, anybody in the body of Christ that the Holy Spirit starts speaking to their members to change their name uh, to their name. It's biblical. I just showed you and bless God for them, their ministry 
and what they're doing. And that's that's um, um I want to also say the word of the Lord to you. Don't worry about if somebody is going to hell or not. Be concerned about your soul. In our generation, we often want to look at a preacher talking, saying, is they of God? Is this prophet of God? Is this apostle of God? Is this man of God? This woman of God of God? Don't worry about none of that stuff. The Holy Ghost said, be concerned about your soul on whether or not your name is written in my book of life. Don't worry about that. There's a lot of stuff that go on even inside of the, um, the body of Christ. Sometimes, in you know, things happen. People, I don't even want to talk about it. But uh, things happen where it's like you 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 have opportunities to engage somebody. They're jealous of you. They come say something. They try to get your attention. You're like, nigga, please stay over there and do what you're doing. I'm gonna stay over here and do what I'm doing. I ain't got no time to go going back and forth with no. If you for Christ, be for Christ and fulfill your ministry. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Revelation chapter three, verse 12. And don't worry about if somebody's of God or they not of God. Bam. I'm going I'm to tell you like this here. Um, one, one year recently, there was a prophet that prophesied that I would die in Dallas. A true story. And it was some years ago, said that I would die in Dallas, that the Lord showed him that I was going to die in Dallas in a certain year. So that year happened, right? And what the Lord started showing me was I'm not going to send nobody to tell you and me and you talk face to face all the time. I'm not going to send somebody to you to tell you that you're going to die in your city. I got direct access to you. I'm talking to you face to face. The Lord was telling me, don't respect him. <laughs> no more. So, so the same prophet years later wanted to talk with me. I don't say much to him. I don't say much to him because I know that he carnal and he fleshly and he jealous. He got a problem with jealousy. There are men that have problems with jealousy. It don't matter how much anointed they have experience in their past because that's often the only anointing that they be experiencing because when your heart becomes hardened, you don't keep on receiving new anointing from the Holy Spirit because he separates from you because you want to dabble with Satan, dabble with the occult. So he don't say much to you. That's why I told you there's prophets that you're supposed to disobey because they have become assholes. In the spirit world, you, you need to understand that the word of God talks about if a prophet could prophesy things and he, the thing is not from the Lord, it say not to respect that prophet. Don't respect him, which means it, it actually say don't fear him. Why? Because the person is not subject to the Holy Spirit to say what the Holy Spirit wants. They're going to add and place their emotions involved in their prophecies. Become divination. And that's why people be. Uh, and let me just show you an example of this. If you don't like a female, then you tell some. Oh, the Lord showed me that He gonna judge her. He gonna cut her off. Meanwhile, it's just you don't like her. So now you want to involve God in your disliking of that person. That's what people do, and that's where they step into divination. That's when they step into. Um, that, that flow of mediums and fallen angels talking to them because now they want to remember it's a Balaam thing. Remember, Balaam was paid to go curse the children of Israel. And God saying, you can't curse who I bless. You see what I'm saying? But Balaam wanted to keep on prophesying that they was going to be cursed. 
Now, is Balaam a prophet? Yes. Is Balaam an asshole? Yes. And that's why a generation don't know how to separate. They don't know how to separate. And, and then somebody be like, oh, you saying the person is an asshole? You're not supposed to say that because they're a prophet. No, you don't fear that kind of prophet. Ain't nothing going to happen to you if you speak the truth about them. Somebody tell you right now, oh, the Lord telling me to tell you to go back to your husband and, 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 and remarry him and propose him. And you're not supposed to go do that. You're supposed to disrespect that prophet. You're not supposed to follow the instruction. I don't have, throughout the course of my ministry, I've had prophets come and tell me stuff and I disobeyed them and that's how I prospered. <laughs> I didn't believe them. That's how I prospered. I didn't follow their advice. And then years later, when we're talking, they'll say, you know, you, you, you wise, you did the right thing. So if I wasn't going to listen to you after I obeyed you and things go left, then you, then you would hop in. And be like, oh, well, that's your choice. Because that's how they do. That's your choice. You make your own choice. I didn't make you do it. Just like the young prophet, the old prophet. So you got to understand the spirit world. That's why even God gives you a leader and have you submit to that leader. So that you don't have to be involved in that confusion. You don't have to be involved in deception because you have a leader. You have somebody that the Holy Spirit done told you, you hear the word from them. And then um, uh, you should never be connected to another preacher that has attacked your prophet in the past, the present or the future. You should not. When when people turn against Dr. Mike Murdoch, I don't have no conversation with them. I don't talk with them. I don't say hi, hello to them. No, they're not going to hear my voice. That's one thing. Dr. Murdoch will never hear that I am connected or I'm watching or I'm affiliated with anybody that have put their mouth on him. Past, present, and future. I can forgive them for what they do, but I ain't stupid. And I'm not disloyal. And if you was disloyal to him, I'm going to be disloyal to you because my loyalty to, his, to him. Every, anybody that's a friend to all is a friend to none. If you take a note right down that wisdom door, he that is a friend to all is a friend to none. You can't be friends to everybody. That's not even biblical. God is not friends with everybody. How would you all like that somebody wrongs you? They... Do you dirty and then God is right there laughing and talking with them. Would you trust God? Just be honest. Would you trust God? Dad, dad, God is laughing and talking with somebody that just did me unjustly. Would you? No. God, the Bible said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. That means God saying, if they do you wrong, I'm going to do them wrong. I'm going to get them back for what they did to you. I'm going to show them how it feels. So in real life, you shouldn't be affiliated with nobody that does your leader wrong. They talk about them. They do. You in witchcraft. You in sorcery. Because the Holy Spirit gave you a voice and you know that this person talked against your voice. Why are you still affiliated with them? You got their demons inside of you and you got their consequences that they got on their life. Those consequences going to come to you because what the Holy Ghost going to say, why are you found with Korah? And Moses is who I told to talk to you. Everybody that was found with Korah got ate up in the ground with Korah. Is that not Bible? Everybody that was with Achan, when he, he disobeyed Joshua, he disrespected Joshua instruction. Everybody was burnt on fire with Achan because they was affiliated with him, his wife and children. And oftentimes you wonder, why does God kill children? Because children carry on the lineage of their parents. If Achan is a liar and a trickster, his sons and his daughters are liars and tricksters too. Now you understand why in the word of God, God destroyed the children of Egyptians because they were sorcerers like their fathers and their mamas. 
They were liars and tricksters and magicians like their fathers and mothers. So when God kills them off, he is cutting off the continuation of the wicked generation that was come nextly. That was going to come secondarily. Oh, I done said some things to you. Life is about altars. When God introduced you to sowing into the gospel, he's having you build altars of good news, graciousness, glory, gold with no grief. He's having you build altars of.